In an SUV-obsessed world, it takes a brave automaker to challenge the status quo and do things a bit differently, especially in a market that they're not really selling very many in. But is this beauty just skin deep? Or can this ultimate activity vehicle really convince European buyers that this is the right wagon for them? There's only one way to find out. Welcome to the Neo ET5 Touring and welcome to the Fully Charged Show. The Fully Charged Show is generating positive energy with its live events all around the world. Next up, it's Fully Charged Live Canada. Click the top right of the screen to get your tickets today. Let me start with a question. Why are we so bloody obsessed with SUVs? Is it safety, practicality, space, combination of all of the above? Whatever it is, we've lost the way. Our cities are cluttered with oversized cars that we don't really need. Now, Neo have been playing it safe for the past few years. They bought our SUVs and then sedans, but they now want to tap into the 1.6 million wagons that are sold every year. And let's be honest, there isn't much competition, is there? We have the fantastic MG5, which everyone loves, at a very affordable price point. Then we have the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo, which is slightly beyond most people's price points. Now this sits somewhere in the middle, and I think it's a very tempting proposition for people who currently drive ice wagons to drive an EV wagon. And it's not just a wagon in terms of space, but the practicality will blow your mind as it blew mine. So let's find out about some of those practical aspects. Now, of course, the driving experience in this is very similar to the ET5 sedan. It comes with the same dual motor, zero to 60 is in something like 3.7 seconds in sports mode, which is really good for something like a performance wagon like this. It makes it fun driving up and down those mountain roads. It also makes it fun driving in the city like we are now. Now, of course, this being a Neo, it comes with NOP, the self-driving system, which makes driving actually really easy. It's quite a chilled system. Um, it really easily gobbles up motorway miles. Now, the chassis, of course, still feels quite solid. It feels secure. Uh, there's not much difference between this and the sedan. The only real difference is that the range has been slightly affected. So with the 75 kilowatt hour battery, the range is dropped from 450-ish to about 435. On the bigger 100 kilowatt hour battery, it's much the same story. I think that's because of the added weight from the rear, you know, you've got extra bits of glass, there's extra complicated parts. So that obviously does dent the range, but it's still a pretty decent CLTC range of over 500 kilometers in the 100 kilowatt hour battery version. And of course, this comes with the battery swapping, which is a good thing and a bad thing because it does make the car a little bit heavy because you only have that choice between the 75 kilowatt hour or the 100 kilowatt hour battery, soon to have a 150 kilowatt hour battery. It means that the chassis is kind of set to one width because the battery which swaps in this one has to swap into the big SUVs as well. So such as the ES8, which is on a much larger kind of footprint, this has to have the same battery swapping capabilities as that. In real life, it looks perfect. It's everything, there's no bad angle on this car. From the quite aggressive front end, which kind of flares out on the sides to the lights, this is a culmination of all of Neo's designs over the past few years. Now, whereas before I thought maybe Neo's designs may be, may be a seven out of 10, this is a full 10 out of 10 and I would swipe right in car Tinder on this car. Now, most of the cars come in lots of different colors. I think there's about 10 different colors. This is in a very subtle pinky gray color, which I think looks beautiful. I actually would pick this color myself. It looks even better at night. Now the cars come in two wheel sizes, just 19 or 20 inch. And for once, we don't have the top of the range one. We have the one with 19 inch wheels and these perfectly fill the arches here and look fab. Of course, sticks with the LiDAR unicorn horns at the top. But what is most exciting is that practical element. Now, every single car, every ET5 Touring comes with roof rack bars as standard, which means you can put your canoe, your bike, your roof rack on this car. They've really thought about 
how this can be used in every situation. One of my criticisms of the ET5 sedan and with this one as well, the steering feel does feel a little bit disconnected from the road. There's not much in terms of feedback and that's kind of a bit of a disappointment. If you want this to be a smart performance sedan, it can do the smart bit very well. But the performance bit, yes, it's got the acceleration, but then the steering feel is somewhat lacking. It's a very minor point in what is overall a very lovely car to drive, absolutely no complaints. And you know, city driving, which is realistically what this is gonna do, this fits into the city so much better than an oversized SUV. And I just love accelerating in the Neos because it's super quiet in the cabin. There's very little drama, but it just feels really nice. Now we are in eco plus mode, but it's still exceptionally brisk and can out accelerate most other cars, including its ice brethren, the ice wagons so beloved by lots and lots of people. So whilst I'm back here, I also want to talk about two of potentially its flaws. Now, of course it looks fantastic from the outside, but the practicality falls just a little bit short. So I'm gonna get the, oh, see what I mean? That's what I'm just about to talk about. This is the official, oh, that really hurt. Official fully charged tape measure. Now, if I put it up to here, 174. Now I'm just a little bit taller than that. And as you just saw, I did just bang my head. So if you're a tall Dutch person, you might also bang your head on this as well. I don't know if they can improve that, maybe lift it up higher, I don't know but one small minus point for the Neo. I also don't really like how they've written blue sky coming across here. This is very build your dreams and kind of a little bit unnecessary, but at least it's hidden in here where you don't have to look at it. Let's say you've had enough of your Rave, but thanks to those 23 speakers in here, it sounds really good. And it's got the Dolby Atmos system as well. Now, I've finished my rave, I'm a little bit tired. I wanna come and enjoy the camping mode of this car. So the screen will go off, the temperature will be kept at an ambient level. But let's say, oh no, I've got a bit of mud on my trousers, I've got a bit of a dirty bum. I've just sat on this wonderfully white colored kind of leatherette material in here. Luckily it's called something called Clean Plus, which means it's really easy to clean with a wet cloth I mean, you won't have any problems later on. Now, what Neo have really done is thought about every eventuality for camping, expeditions, adventures, families at home, in the city, in rural areas, everything. Because let's say, for example, I'm very tired from my rave or canoeing or whatever I've been doing. I can sit in this seat and it's got a massage function as standard. That is a lovely little touch. Not only that, I can let the seat go back and I can dim the roof, 1.32 meter roof, and I can dim it like that special glass you sometimes see on aeroplanes. So really, they're thinking about every type of user in here and every type of eventuality. Although it's not perfect, they've done a really good effort to get somewhere towards that direction. In the rear, there's even more space for activities, which is good because with the wagon body, it means you get extra things like more headroom. 17 millimeters more headroom back here, which actually makes quite a big difference. In the ET5 sedan, I was getting a bit close to the roof. Again, this actually has an extra 55 millimeters of legroom over the Tesla Model Y. It also has the ubiquitous cup holders, very nice motion there. And you can also fold down the middle seat to put skis in or bits of wood or whatever you need to put, which is long in here. So it does beg the question, why on earth would anyone buy an SUV over this? It's just so much better thought out in terms of space, design, practicality, efficiency. Wagons for the win. At time of filming, I don't actually know the price of this car. However, let me just tell you this. Just a couple of days ago, Neo reduced the price across all of its models by over $4,000 each. That now brings the ET5 sedan to below the Tesla Model 3 in terms of price. 
this I think will just be a few thousand dollars more. So this then becomes a very, 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 very compelling argument to switch to an EV wagon. What I think Neo have done here, apart from creating a drop dead gorgeous, perfectly proportioned, everyday super adventure wagon, is bring wagons out of the darkness and into the light.